Hey, hi, thanks for joining me in this video. It's time for an update since it's been more than 6 months since the previous video. First of all, I've not given up on the shooter game and I definitely plan to continue the normal devlogs at some point. What happened is after the last video, I figured that since I'd been working on the game for almost 2 years, I'd give myself a little break and make a small side project over the winter holiday. My plan was to make a tiny game about a flying squirrel and release it on Steam. Since I've never actually made a commercial game before, this seemed like a good way to practice the game dev process from start to finish. Long story short, it took a bit longer than 2 weeks. This is Walter Walnut. It's a small game where you glide from island to island and collect hazelnuts and golden peanuts. It's about Walter, a small flying squirrel with a package delivery job. His boat broke down and the goal is to simply run and glide your way to deliver the package. In this devlog I'll go over what it took so far and what I've learned from making Walter Walnut. Before jumping into Unity I wrote down a couple things I personally like in video games. I decided I wanted to make a simple game that switches between shooting sections and gliding. I really enjoy the sense of freedom that comes with gliding and it seems like a good way to break up the action segments. With this abstract concept in mind I built the first prototype. It basically just consists of a cinemachine camera and a rigid body character controller. For the character controller I also implemented step detection and a small squish effect to give the jump more impact. This felt nice to play around with so I moved on to the character design. Originally I had a sci-fi theme in mind where the player would jump and glide between metal structures and fight little robots. However, since my main project is already quite sci-fi themed, I decided to take this game in a different direction. I watched some National Geographic videos on flying squirrels and I really liked the idea of a squirrel protagonist. After the usual steps of modeling, texturing and animating, I completed the initial character design. I dragged it into Unity and set up some bouncy tail and air physics to make the character feel alive. I then implemented flying logic and tweaked the movement until it felt nice. You may have noticed one issue and that is that the wings are missing. I put off the wings because I didn't really know how to rig them onto the character. In an attempt to make the wings, at first I wrote a super convoluted procedural mesh system with four anchors to control the wing shape. After spending a couple hours trying to get it to work properly, I opened Blender, rigged the plane and used that instead. Each wing corner has one bone that connects to the character rig and this way it nicely deforms with the animations. At this point I was super happy with how things were coming along, so I built a simple level and tried to get a feel for the final game. With the character implemented, development progressed quite fast. I added a small boat for the start of the game and designed the first enemy. I also set up dialogue using a dialogue asset and started to implement the combat. Going back to the original concept, I wanted the game to have shooting and so I made it so you collect hazelnuts and shoot them at the enemy birds. After playing around with this for a bit, I quickly found it doesn't feel as nice as I had hoped. The free loop camera made aiming very tricky and in an attempt to fix it, I added a subtle aim assist. Unfortunately this just made the combat boring, so I decided to scrap shooting completely. Instead I put melee combat. For the melee attack Walter spins really quick and I'm using an overlap sphere to detect any nearby colliders with a hit detection component. This melee attack felt way better because now players actually need to take some risk to defeat enemies. Talking about scrapped features, I also wanted the game to have grappling at first. Grappling was quite fun to implement and mess around with, however my friend felt it was too disconnected from the squirrel team so I ended up removing it. Ok now I was about one week into the project and I decided to tackle something I had very little experience with. One thing I heavily procrastinated with the main project is audio. In an attempt to not make the same mistake twice, I started implementing music and sound effects early for Walter Walnut. For the music, I searched the asset store for some relaxing background tracks and found this casual music pack. I then used audio mixers for the first time to blend between basic and full versions of the music depending on whether the player is gliding.
Next I implemented some ambient sound. The first area has a lot of water, so I put something that sounds like ocean waves. I made the ambient audio fade out the higher the player gets, because the higher you get, the more distance between the water and the player. With the music and ambient audio implemented, I also started thinking about more direct sounds like jump and attack audio. For these sounds I mainly used free sound. For example, let's take this bouncy mushroom. First I find a bunch of sounds that fit with what I have in mind and throw them all into Audacity. I then cut the individual sounds and apply some effects to change things like the bass and the pitch. Finally, I like to listen to all the sounds together, move them around a bit and remove any sounds that don't fit. Once it sounds coherent, I export everything to Unity and use it in-game. In Unity I'm using a custom component to randomize the audio by choosing between slightly different audio clips and also by randomizing the pitch. Lastly for the audio, I quickly want to show the footstep system. To line up the audio exactly with the run animation, I'm using animation events. They're like little markers within the animation that can trigger external behavior at very specific moments. In this case, it triggers the footstep audio exactly when Walter's foot hit the ground. The footstep system then uses a ray cost to determine the ground type and adjust audio accordingly. This way I can differentiate between surfaces like grass, stone and metal. With most of the player movement and audio in place, it's time to do some level design. Just like in my main project, I'm using the Unity Terrain system with a custom triplanar shader that does most of the texturing for me. This time I'm also using Toon Lighting to get a nice cartoony look. Additionally, I'm using Unity's Light Mapper to bake light maps so that caves are a bit darker compared to the rest of the scene. My approach for the level design is to put small islands you can glide between so there's a nice mix of platforming, fighting and gliding. For the opening area, I wanted to gradually introduce new things. First it's only NPCs, then there's enemy birds, then there's the first airstream, etc. This way of introducing new things as you progress should also hopefully keep the gameplay interesting. After a couple islands, players can encounter the first boss fight. It's a small game, so it only has 3 bosses in total. The first boss is just the giant walnut that jumps around and tries to crush the player. This boss takes the player position and then lurps there over time, while offsetting his Y position to create a jump motion. For the Y offset, I'm using an animation curve to have really fine control over the jump. I decided to make all enemies and bosses in the game optional, so if you want you can simply glide past all of them, but you'll miss out on some coins. At this point I was about 1 month into the project. I definitely realized that my initial time estimate wasn't super realistic, but I was still under the impression that the game was almost done. I showed the game on reddit for the first time and people seemed to really like it, so that was motivating. I continued the level design and also added saving and loading using easy save. Since the game was getting bigger, I also had to start thinking about performance. Initially the plan was to avoid any scene transitions and just have one continuous world. I was thinking to use asynchronous scene loading to seamlessly load and unload parts of the world. However, implementing this in a way that looks seamless and doesn't cause any hiccups while gliding seemed time consuming. Instead I opted to keep things simple and just put doors. The doors are made of walnuts and require a key to open. I actually quite like this because the key adds a nice little challenge at the end of each area. For example, in the second area the key is turned to stone and you need to collect some items to turn it to gold and open the door. From here on, I mostly focused on adding more content, creating assets, NPCs and small features to keep the game interesting. I also decided to get rid of the dialogue asset because I couldn't really figure it out and implemented my own system. The custom dialogue system shows dialogue from a text file and I've implemented commands to control the flow of the dialogue. For example, break exits the dialogue, switch switches between the player and the NPC and action shows which key to press to perform a certain action. The main thing I've learned from building Walter Walnut is just how much effort goes into creating even the smallest game. There's so much stuff I wouldn't otherwise think about during a prototype or a game jam. For example making the UI work correctly with controllers, performance optimizations, settings, input remapping and bug fixing all took way more time and effort than expected. At least hopefully I'll be able to carry some of this stuff over from Walter Walnut to my main project. If you have any feedback on Walter Walnut, I would love to hear. Please consider wishlisting Walter Walnut. It will help me with the Steam algorithm. I hope even though this dev look was different than normal, it was still interesting. Thanks for watching.